today as we paint this beautiful fly like an eagle, the majestic symbol of American freedom silhouetted on the supermoon. Hi, welcome to another episode of The Rock and Roll Painter. My name is J.D. Wayne and I am The Rock and Roll Painter. Today we have a uh, painting called Fly Like an Eagle. We're going to have the, uh, the majestic symbol of American freedom silhouetted on this super moon. It's going to be a really cool painting. We've done this in class a few times in the last month. It's really, really been a fun painting. So we have a 16 by 20 canvas and I have a uh, piece of contact paper I stuck out here for my moon. What this is, just uh, I took the lid off a four quart saucepan Created that, stuck it on there, and that's going to be my super moon. And we have a thin, even coat of a liquid, a clear liquid medium, just for a wet on wet technique. And with that, let's get started. I'm going to start with a little bit of a phalo blue. We're just going to cover this whole canvas with this phalo blue. I know it's going to be hard to see; it's a transparent color, but we're going to light it up here in a little bit, and you'll really be able to see it. Just want to get this whole canvas covered. Now, some of the previous shows, I'm getting some feedback from my family and friends that I'm painting too fast. Because I was the rock and roll painter, and, and my goal was to get a painting done very fast. So I'm going to work real hard to try to slow down a little bit today, really explain what I'm doing. But I appreciate that feedback from family and friends. Like I say, we're getting this whole canvas covered with some phalo blue. It's going to be a nighttime sky for this big super moon. See if we get this phalo blue all over the canvas. Phalo blue is a nice, nice color. One of, my, one of my favorite colors. Okay, now I'm gonna take a little bit of phalo blue and a little bit of midnight black just to darken up these corners. When the corners are dark, it helps pull your eye into the canvas, the focus of this canvas. All this super moon, you're gonna, your eye's gonna go right to it every time. Okay, now we got the canvas totally covered with paint. You got any brush strokes? Now we're gonna light that up. I'm gonna take a small one inch brush with some titanium white, little bit of titanium white. I'm gonna start lighting up. Now you see that blue really lighting up now. These little X's give different values of the color in the sky. Kind of gives the sky some some character, got to keep that. Start picking up a lot of the color here. So I'm gonna wipe out some of that excess color and pick up some more of the white. Got stuff in my way here. And we'll try to do more to talk to the camera too instead of to, instead of to the canvas. Okay, like I say, we're lighting the sky up. Lighting this nighttime sky up. And that'll give a contrast for some trees to show in the front. There we go, we get that nice sky lit up. Now I'm gonna take a clean, clean two inch brush. Just kind of work out a little bit of the brush strokes. Like I say, these different values of the color really give some nice character to the sky instead of one flat color. Now I'm gonna kill that line between the dark and the blue so there's no, no hard line there. There, we lit that sky up. Now it's a nighttime sky, I think we need some stars. This is one of my fun things to do with stars. I know it kind of makes a mess in the studio here. So we're gonna to try, to try to be good about it, try to be neat. So if I get a little bit of thinner on my fan brush, a little bit of my liquid white, and a little bit of my titanium white, I'm gonna to try to get a milk, milky, creamy kind of consistency here. Just a little bit more of the thicker white. A little bit of the thicker white. Now if I just pull back on these bristles, like so, we can start getting some stars on here. Look at that, out. love those stars. Really gives it a nighttime look on those, that dark, dark sky up there. There, that's so easy to effective look. I can see the Big Dipper right there. It's amazing how those things just happen on their own. Happen on their own. Okay, let me stop cleaning my hand up a little bit. Stop cleaning my hand up now. This is where we're gonna pull that, pull that moon off of here. 
Got that piece of contact paper. Got a little bristle there. Take a knife, come right underneath that contact paper. Pull it off, you can see a little bit of the moon. Now I did a little bit of pre-work with just some gesso. Kind of established the uh, man on the moon, these craters. And this, uh, these things here are actually called Maria. The old sailors thought there was um, oceans on the moon. So uh, Maria is a Latin term for moon seas. But that's where our eagle's gonna be and it gives a little contrast there. So the eagle show up. What I wanna do is get that moon, I wanna get that moon wet with a little bit of my clear medium. There it is over here. We get that moon wet because if it's a wet on wet technique, we need to get it a little wet. Don't want too much of this stuff because it can drip on you. I know there's harvest moons, blood moons, blue moons, but we don't want to cry a moon. I don't want to see this paint drip on here. A super moon, I don't know if people know where that, what causes a super moon. The moon doesn't rotate around the earth in an exact circle. There's times it's closer to the, to the earth than other times. And when you have a full moon at that exact moment that's closer, you get the supermoon. Although the term supermoon wasn't really coined until 1979. Learned that too. Okay, now I'm going to take a little bit of lizard and crimson. This is going to be a blood moon. Start giving some color. Look at that blood moon coming to life here. Nice super blood moon. Like I said, blood moon, wolf moon, harvest moon. There's a lot of different names for these supermoons. This one's going to be a blood moon. You can see already how it looks like that big moon just sitting out there in the sky. Like I say, this was a real popular class. People really liked it. I'm going to start on this side because if I get some of that blue pulled in there, it won't hurt anything. But over on that side, I'm going to have a little bit of yellow. If I pull that blue into that yellow, I'll have a green moon. I haven't heard any super green moons. See there, I pull a little bit of that blue in. And we get this a little bit darker back here to help get some shape to the moon. Help get some shape. Pull that around. See, I like that color, that blood moon. Now the other side of the blood moon, I'm gonna take a different brush, a little flat brush. I'm gonna go with some Indian yellow. We'll light that moon up now. Here we go, get some Indian yellow on this side. We'll really light that moon up. This is where you gotta be careful. You don't wanna pull that yellow into that blue and you get a green moon. So we'll, we'll leave a little bit of that edge exposed and we'll come back in with some pure white. That'll really help light it up. I just wanna get some of this yellow on here. And where the yellow and the red can come together, you might get a third color, you might get some orange showing up in that blood moon. That's just fine. All right, now I'm gonna come back with just some white. See if we can cut around there without pulling in too much of that blue. We'll light that super moon right up. Start down here, pull it around. So I'm gonna do my best to try to make these shows last a little longer. I know I was going way too fast, but that's what I do. I'm the, I was known for painting fast. That's where the whole rock and roll painter came about. But there, we got that super moon lit up. Now we need something in front of that to, to really push that moon back. So I'm gonna take a knife. I'm gonna mix some colors here. I'm gonna take, let me get that out of my way. Take some blue, some of that crimson, about half my black. Come up with a nice dark color. With a nice dark color. Turn that over. Now I'm taking another little fan brush. Me getting paint all over myself. Let's stop keeping my hands clean. I'm a stickler about keeping, keeping clean during these shows. Get some of the paint off there. Anyway, we're gonna pick up some of this dark color. We're gonna load that brush up. Gonna load that brush up. We'll start putting some trees here in front of this. We've got a big tree right here. That's not the trunk, that's just kind of showed me where I want that tree to go. And I want to see that moon through those limbs. I want to see it through those limbs. That helps push that moon way back up in the sky. I like how easy those trees are to do. Let's get another tree. We'll have this one a little smaller here. Maybe another one right there. 
Be another one right there. <clears throat> so you just kind of push on this brush and those trees just fall right out of there. Like I say, I like to see that moon through the trees. So down at the bottom, those trees are all just growing together. <clears throat> Little branches at the top, bigger branches at the bottom, just like a Christmas tree. Called a truncating shape. You see how that pushes that moon, pushes that moon back, seeing those trees in front of it. That contrast between the dark and the light really looks nice. Let's have another bigger tree over here. Maybe one right here. And even far away, we have some little trees. Far, far away. Back over here. That'll help fill up some of that, some of that skyline there. Just want the illusion of some treetops. Just give another layer for some distance. Now we'll go back and form these trees over here. Say with the corner of the brush, you're just kind of touching. As you're coming down, you get more of the brush involved. Watch those evergreens just fall right out of it. Another one here. Maybe there's some far off trees back there. Let those kind of grow together. And maybe we'll have another one right here. Tree in front of those far off trees. And let's see. I like making these trees. We can make these all day. Make these all day. Maybe we'll have another one over here. It kind of sticks up. You see how it's lit up back there? I don't know if there's a Walmart back there or something to kind of light it up. But that's where the focus of this painting will be, right there. Right there at that super moon. There we go, got maybe something back over here. You wanna fill the bottom of that canvas up. You don't see any holes through there. Now to help give some, uh, some depth to those trees, I'm gonna wipe off some of this excess color. Wipe off some of this excess color. Get some of my white. Come back in the dark. I just want a lighter value, but I don't want it to be white. So I want a lighter value. Even though this down here doesn't look like it's very light, compared up to here, it's, it's a lighter value. So they say we'll give a little bit of highlight, not much to these trees, just a little bit of highlight to help give some, some shape to these trees. Go back and get a little bit more of my color. But these highlight wouldn't be all the way over here. It's mainly here where the, mainly here where the moon is. You see it, just a little bit of highlight. What it does really give shape to them trees. And it's just the contrast, a little bit lighter value to them dark trees, just gives a nice, a nice shape to them trees. See over here, it gets darker and darker and darker, and it's a mystery. Where does that go over there? There, I like to see a nice, wonderful dark sky, the night sky. You see the Big Dipper right there, you kind of see them shape there. Nice trees, a little bit of highlight on that super moon. Now, we'll see if we can put a nice eagle right here. To do that eagle, let's see what we got. Got a little liner brush, coming to a little bit of thinner. We'll go right into our black. Go right into our black. I don't know if I can block the camera here, but let's see if we can create a, let's see if we can get an eagle going right. Right there, that'll be the body of an eagle. Not looking like an eagle yet, I know, but we're gonna make it look like an eagle. Let's see, we've got some wings coming down here. Oh yeah, I can see on the monitor over here, you can see what's going on. I'll try to stay out of the way here. Now the camera gets some more of this dark color. <clears throat> I try to create, create some loose wings or some feathers kind of growing out of there. Get the illusion of them being in flight. Get some more of that dark color. Now, the tail feathers and the, and the head of that eagle. You think they're white, but we're gonna make a gray value. You get a little bit of a gray. So we're gonna go with a little bit of white, a little bit of black, come up with a gray value. And then we'll highlight that gray a little bit to give the illusion of it being, being white. So let's see if that gray's light enough. So we'll come out here with some tail feathers. And we'll put a little, little head on that eagle. Now we just now we need some just straight white. Yeah, I know I said I was gonna slow down. I'm still painting too fast, too fast. We'll try to slow down more on the next, 
next painting. But this is really a simple painting. I really like the way that eagle looks. Now see we give a little bit of a little bit of highlight to the top of that eagle. And it gives it that look of the bald eagle. You just see a little bit of that highlight. And we'll come back with a little bit of white. Light up a little bit of those tail feathers. And you have the illusion of an eagle. So when you stand back the way you see an oil painting, you have the illusion of an eagle. You never want to be right on top of an oil painting. Let me get a little bit more white up on his head here. There, that would really make it stand out. And we need just a little bit of a beak there. Got just enough detail where maybe you could see his beak. To do that, it's got a special, special brush toothpick. Something that small, it's just nice to have a little bit of a, something I can really get in there. And I found a toothpick really works nice. We just get a little bit of that cad yellow. And put just a little bit, just a hint of a beak there. It kind of gives a little bit of shape little bit of shape. Now what I like to do also, if I take a little bit of the blue, a little bit of white, a little bit of a blue, it might be a little too dark, get a little different value. Just give a little cool light underneath, underneath his wings, just a little bit of that blue, just a little bit of reflective light. You don't want much, just a hint of that. Where my fingers were touching the moon, I was kind of steady, setting up. So there, I like that majestic symbol of American freedom sil silhouetted on that dramatic, on that dramatic super moon. I like the way that turned out. So now, you know what I like to do. My favorite thing in the painting. I know we went fast again, but I like to I have to sign my name. Let's see, we'll sign it over here. J. D. W. Really liked how that turns out. Really liked that blue, that deep, deep, dark sky. Okay, let me get my hands cleaned up. We're going to take this out of the frame. Take it out of the easel. See what we can do, put it in the frame. You can see all this blue you get in your hands. And blue, I've said it every show, that blue will follow you home. So we get some of that off there. So I can safely pick my painting up. But yeah, I really, really like how that looks. Nice distance in the trees, nice depth. All right, let's take this off here. Go see what we got in the frame. Okay, as always, I like to see a finished painting, painting into a frame. And we get a chance to enjoy the work you've done, show it off, let people see it, and keep people from touching it. I don't know why people want to touch it, but they do. All right, we'll just put these speed clips on here like so. And we'll drop that onto the easel. Yeah, I really, really like how that dark sky, the silhouetted moon, and the eagle. This painting is called Fly Like an Eagle, the depth in those trees. Really, really like how it turned out. So if you'd like to know more about painting, wet on wet painting, or classes, feel free to contact me at jdwayne at therockandrollpainter.com. Thanks for watching.